there's no chance that we're going to reduce the human impact by trying to make everybody a lot poorer. We think of coal now as sort of the enemy of the environment number one, but coal allowed us to stop chopping down forests and using wood as fuel. And coal allowed massive global reforestation. Cycling is energy intensive. So besides your scrap material input, what's your next largest cost on production? Electricity. Electricity. In a week's time, if both fires are dry, we'll probably use more electricity than the city of Shadow in a year. Yep. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> in fact, one of the things that we've been chasing is, you know, we've got all this waste heat, but it's the nature of it that doesn't lend itself very well to, you know, throwing in a conventional Rankin cycle somewhere. In theory, back of the napkin kind of stuff, maybe we could recover another 20 or 30 megawatts out of the 200 we're sharing between these two furnaces. So as we probably captured 90% of what's to be captured, chasing the last 10% is pretty expensive. Most people don't understand everything you look at, touch, feel, anything is tangible, there's energy behind it, a lot of it. I mean, you got the, the same people that demand fresh fish be flown in from Alaska in cold storage. They're the ones that, oh, we gotta have wind power, we gotta have all these, all these options that aren't viable, so. Yeah. Uh, it's a frustration we felt in this industry. How do you water use? We're evaporatively cooling, and we use about two and a half million gallons a day, so we're a pretty big water user which is about a tenth of what the paper mills use. But you can get far more cycles on recycling steel or oh, aluminum well, than you could out of paper or plastic. Oh, sure. Yeah, actually, it's debatable whether paper recycling is even that great a pursuit. In some cases, it's mandated, but this is one where economics drives the recycling. But the steel industry is probably one of the better models of recycling. Aluminum, too, would be. There's less given over to waste. If we could make energy cheap enough, there's a lot of other products you could Absolutely. make economic to recycle. Absolutely. The steel industry is probably one of the better models of recycling. Aluminum, too, would be. There's less given over to waste. A lot of energy consumption, it's an unbelievably optimized process where there's not the same room for improvement, which is largely industrial processes. This is a 200 ton electric arc furnace. The main power source for the furnace is electricity. And so each furnace at max power is about 105 megawatts. We load scrap into large haul trucks and they back up into this bucket and dump scrap inside. That's dozens of cars. Yeah, a lot of cars. So that bucket probably has 140 tons of scrap in it right now. We also use pig iron from a blast furnace, appliances, uh, we chop up rail, old rail cars, uh, demolish bridges, buildings, um, whatever. I told them if they thought anything go boom and run behind you, yeah. that's still the standard protocol. That's right, I got Kevlar on. Uh, you guys do the same, we're all getting behind you. We would stop going into high risk areas where extracting oil is environmentally hazardous. We would stop blowing tops up of mountains. You know, there's all kinds of things we'd stop doing. Nuclear provides the promise of actually being able to reduce the human impact even further through technology. And all of it's driven, ironically, by a lot more energy consumption. And this is where I have a differing opinion than I think a lot of environmentalists are always trying to drive us towards using less energy because all that energy is coming from the consumption of fossil fuel. Well, let's say your energy is not coming from the consumption of fossil fuel. If there was a lot of it, and it was not harmful to the environment, what would you do that you're not doing now? Why nuclear energy? Especially after what happened in Japan. And why molten salt reactor? And why thorium? Here is pure electrical car developed by Chinese Academy of Sciences. We used to have a dream, if we can produce a clean electricity, then we can drive our electrical car. However, if you look at this, as of today, it's all gasoline cars. So it makes our job even impossible. We need a revolutionary something happen the white thorium. And why MSR? Low pressure here, which gives you more safety. 
we also end up with the high temperature here. We need high temperature. Because if you can go 900 degrees C, then we can use this energy to convert the CO2, which is not the waste at all. It's a, it's a raw material for our chemicals, in fact. We need the energy to convert them. We need the high temperature. We're still going to need liquid fuels for vehicles and machinery, but we could generate these liquid fuels from the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and from water, much like nature does. We could generate hydrogen by splitting water and combining it with carbon harvested from CO2 in the atmosphere, making fuels like methanol, ammonia, and dimethyl ether, which could be a direct replacement for diesel fuels. The whole planet's transportation system is gauged toward the consumption of a fossil fuel. There's an entire internal combustion infrastructure on the planet of uh, fuel delivery, automobile repair, service stations, roads. Imagine carbon neutral gasoline and diesel, sustainable and self-produced. Which is a, a way of getting the full life cycle out of the infrastructure we've already built up. Because you don't want to just abandon the infrastructure we've already built up. We have trillions of dollars of internal combustion engine machinery around, but we need to at least stop putting more stuff in the air. You can not only halt the increase of CO2 emissions, you can start to reverse what was there and reverse the coming calamity of global warming.